Hello, my name is Professor Shahid Khan. I'm a liver specialist based in London. Thank you for listening to me. So uh, PBC stands for primary biliary cholangitis. It used to be called primary biliary cirrhosis. And it's a, it's a disease of the liver. It's a chronic slow disease where there is um, the immune system in the liver attacks itself for reasons we don't know, particularly affecting the bile ducts. So your liver is this large organ which sits on the right side of the body in the upper abdomen. And it does many things. The liver makes proteins, it makes uh, vitamins and stores vitamins, it detoxifies the blood. And one of the things the liver does amongst many things is it makes bile. So bile is this green fluid uh, made by the liver cells and the bile duct cells that, that are produced in the liver and then flow through these network of tubes called the bile ducts. And the bile ducts start off very small, they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then they eventually take the bile out of the liver into the intestines. And the bile has several actions. It helps digest food, and the bile also um, carries away toxins as well. So in PBC, the, 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 the problem is in those bile ducts, particularly these small bile ducts within the liver, they become inflamed. And so the flow of bile through the liver becomes a bit slow and this can irritate the liver and damage the liver. And some patients can get eventually uh, liver damage and cirrhosis. So that's what um, PBC is. Um, we don't know exactly what causes it. Um, but it's it's an, an immune mediated damage to the small bile ducts in the liver. Yeah, so the symptoms of PVC are variable. The the the, the commonest symptoms. Well, firstly, um, if, for reasons again, we we're not sure sure. The majority of patients seem to be female. So around 90 to 95% of people who get PBC are female. Um, and they are usually diagnosed between the ages of 30 and 60. So that's a sort of typical uh, patient, female between 30 and 60, and most commonly diagnosed in their 40s and 50s. <clears throat> it can occur in men, but uh, less than about 10% of cases are in men. Um, the, the, the commonest symptoms seem to be uh, fatigue, quite severe fatigue, um, and about 50% of patients who get diagnosed with PBC, at the time they're diagnosed, have no symptoms. So people are often diagnosed because they have blood tests for some other reason. It's noted that their liver function tests are a bit raised. And when the specialist does some further investigation, sometimes they find PBC. So around 50% of patients um, with PBC may have no symptoms at the time of diagnosis. Um, but in those who have symptoms or in those who develop symptoms, the commonest symptom is probably fatigue, tiredness, despite getting good quality of sleep, um, itching or pruritus. So, so feeling like you want to feeling like you want to scratch your skin um, is another common symptom, probably around different studies reported, some say 20%, some say 50% um, of people get pruritus. Some patients might get, a minority might get a bit of discomfort in the abdomen in the right hand side, although that's quite uncommon. Occasionally patients complain of the sort of brain fog, um, poor concentration, um and these seem to be the main symptoms but you know many people have no symptoms or very very mild symptoms the, in terms of what causes it we don't know that there, there's no there's no direct family history although it has been noted that there can be familial clustering so what that means is that in, in families where there is one 
the autoimmune conditions. So autoimmune conditions are a variety of conditions where the immune system in a part of the body sort of attacks itself. And this can happen in any part of the body. It can happen in the thyroid gland, it can happen in the skin, it can happen in the lung, it can happen in the kidneys, the liver. And, and so all specialists see immune type of diseases within their specialty. And this phenomenon of having an immune mediated illness can sometimes cluster in families. It's not direct inherited means that, you know, if, you, if your mother or sister has PBC, you're going to get PBC. It's not directly linked like that, but there is some sort of genetic susceptibility. But we don't know any other cause. It's not caused by alcohol. Um, it's not, we have not identified any infection or toxin or chemical that causes it, um, which is the same pretty much with all immune mediated diseases in other parts of the body. We don't really understand why that would happen. So that's a good question. So, so in terms of diagnosis, so the first thing is, um, the, the first signal is the blood tests are a bit abnormal and there may be symptoms. Now, the, the, the blood test of raised liver enzymes is not specific. There are many other liver diseases uh, that, and, and other things that can cause liver blood tests to be raised. Um, hepatitis, other immune diseases, um, genetic conditions, uh, medications, antibiotics, painkillers, so many things can temporarily cause the liver test to be raised. So, uh, and also the symptoms of fatigue and tiredness are again, not specific to PBC. So the first thing is to exclude other causes. So uh, other causes of um, these symptoms, other causes of raised liver tests need to be excluded on blood tests and scans. And then in terms of, and then further tests specific to PBC need to be done. So there are some laboratory tests which are specific to PBC. There's a blood test for the anti-mitochondrial antibody. It's a very specific blood test. And over 95% of people who have PBC will have that antibody in their blood test. And there's a particular variant, the M2 variant. So there's a, there is a specific blood test that really only seems to happen in PBC and most PBC patients have it. So, so that's one test. But again, you know, a few percent of people might have PBC and not have that antibody. So, um, but, um, so occasionally people may need a liver biopsy if, um, if, uh, if that's not, um, in case they're in that small group, if they have all the other signs and symptoms and blood tests, but not that specific blood test. And the other thing that needs to be done in, in the diagnosis of PBC is some assessment of whether there is any liver damage or not. Because in patients with PBC, at the beginning, they may not have any liver damage, but in PBC, it can, in some people, lead to chronic scarring and or fibrosis of the liver, which means scarring the liver, which over time in some people can result in cirrhosis. And cirrhosis of the liver is, is um, uh, it's not good because cirrhosis can lead to liver failure and liver cancer. So some people will get cirrhosis. So to assess, so one can make the diagnosis of PBC usually with uh, a combination of blood tests. But the next question is where in that line are people? Are they someone with no scarring, a little bit of scarring or already a lot of scarring? And to establish that some patients need uh, a special scan, for example, a fibro scan, which is um, a special scan that can look for early scarring or stratify how much scarring there may be, um, uh, or to make a, a, a clear diagnosis and establish how much scarring patients may need a liver biopsy, which is a bit more invasive, but needle into the liver to take a sample and analyze it under a microscope. For the treatment for PBC, so <clears throat> there are some general measures and there are some um, specific measures. So general measures are things like um, maintaining good general health, good diet, regular exercise, um, regular sleep, um, 
minimum or, or ideally abstinence from alcohol, abstaining from any other medications or anything that might harm the liver, um, trying um, to keep one's weight healthy. So, uh, so these are the sort of general measures for general health that are important for liver health as well. Um, <clears throat> other important general measures include vaccinations. So vaccinating against viruses that harm the liver, such as hepatitis A and hepatitis B. And in today's world, I think COVID as well, which can sometimes damage the liver. Um, so these are the sort of general specific uh, treatments. Um, then in terms of more specific, sorry, more specific measures, the initial, the, there is a medication called <coughs> ursodeoxycholic acid, um, or sometimes abbreviated to UDCA, sometimes called ursofal. And this is the medication that helps the bile become a bit more sort of slippery, so it flows through the bile ducts more easily, so you don't get hold up of the bile. And uh, this is the first line treatment in most, uh, generally for most patients. And when patients have started on ursodeoxycholic acid, they should be monitored every three to six months to monitor their blood tests. Um, and in the majority of cases, the liver test will improve. If that doesn't happen, then after at least six months to a year of treatment, if the blood tests are not significantly improving, there are a couple of other options, second line treatments, and these include a beta codic acid and uh, fibrates such as beta fibrates. So um, I think the important thing is to say that there are treatments. It's important that patients with PDC are under specialist care because they need to be monitored regularly because this is a chronic condition. We can't eradicate the disease, we can't cure it, but we may be able to delay its progress and monitor people to make sure that they don't get the complications of the disease. So it's important they're under regular monitoring. Um, in terms of long-term monitoring, there are, uh, again, important things to be done for the patient uh, with the liver specialist that they're under. So as well as monitoring the liver function, um, it's important to monitor vitamin levels and to ensure that um, vitamin supplements, the appropriate vitamin supplements are taken. Patients with PVC are also at risk of osteopenia and osteoporosis. So it's important to monitor their bone mineral density as well and patients with PVC may be at risk of um, underactive thyroid, hypothyroidism. So that needs to be screened for regularly as well, um, as well as the, um, the liver monitoring and complications of liver disease needs to be monitored so they can be dealt with or prevented.